Hello and welcome to the e-commerce world review. I'm currently not in the studio, but working remotely from Italy. Today, our focusing is on China, which we have released an in-depth uh, e-commerce report at the end of 2020. This report is available on the website and you have the link in your webinar information. Today, we want to summarize the report and see how it is faring given the very rosy and ambitious target of the year. How has COVID, pandemic, lockdown, unlock and relock affected e-commerce market in China? And what is 2021 going to look like? It is my great pleasure to have with me a wonderful guest. Uh, we have Paul Zhu, by VP uh, Commercial Sales and Account Services from Ascendia. So welcome, Paul. If you want to introduce yourself to our audience, explain your role in Ascendia and uh, what Ascendia does. Hey, um, good morning, afternoon, everybody. Mm -hmm. um, this is Paul, I'm from uh, Ascendia, and uh, I'm a VP of uh, sales and uh, commercial, uh, in charge of uh, sales and uh, uh, after sales account service department. Uh, I've been with Ascendia for about five years, and witnessed, uh, you know, the, the Chinese uh, e-commerce market growing because our revenues are also growing every year. Uh, Ascendia is a joint venture between uh, La Post and uh, Swiss Post. So our uh, main business is uh, uh, providing the logistic solutions to the e-commerce sector. Great, thank you. So now we move forward with the presentation and I will ask you some questions, Paul, during our journey. Okay. So with nearly half of the population aged between 24 and 50, 45 years old, China is also increasing technology-driven economy with high mobile ownership and e-commerce engagement. More than that, it also has war-beating levels of mobile payments, social media and messaging-based e-commerce. All this element combines to make China a key global e-commerce market that is growing domestically. In 2020, as we can see from the graph, almost 70% of internet users shopped online, with more than 700 million people using mobile to shop online. Paul, what do you see as the main characteristics that define China's e-commerce market size? Okay. Um... Today uh, we are talking about the you know the e-commerce market in China is a huge topic and also the you know the, is because of the huge market. Uh, there's a few uh, characteristics uh, define the you know the size of the uh, Chinese e-commerce market. Uh, number one, I think is um, you know perhaps uh, going to be. Uh, three type of e-commerce uh, operators in, in China. Uh, number one is a domestic market. Uh, the domestic market, uh, the revenue um, is about $1.52 trillion for the domestic market itself. Uh, and it's growing. And also we have this uh, so-called uh, export e-commerce market is doing ex China going to overseas. And also the import, you know, e-commerce market. And this, we, we, we call it perhaps a cross-border. Uh, this part, you know, around accounting for about $0.26 trillion into 2020. And uh, the trend for this, you know, cross-border is also incre increasing about 30%, over 30% year on year. Uh, the size of the China market is uh, almost one third, you know, uh, one third of the, uh, the world online retail sales. Uh, because of this, uh, the, the online sales uh, last year is about uh, 
27, the penetration, I mean, the penetration, the e-commerce against the retail in, the, in China is about 27.7%. Uh, so it's a high penetration rate. Uh, there's a few elements is supporting this kind of, uh, you know, the growth and the size of the market. That's number one, I think it's a huge um, and growing buyer base uh, with this improving infrastructure. Mm. Uh, you see, the population of the China is uh, huge. And uh, there's a recent policy that, uh, you know, the, they have removed of this one children, one child policy in China. So this uh, could be, you know, uh, uh, increase uh, the population even faster in the coming years. Uh, and also for the uh, IT side, perhaps, you know, the faster deployment of a 5G network in China, and also the you know the uh, uh, where develop you know the highway and also the you know high speed train network in China. So all this infrastructure could uh, you know let those uh, uh, a group of uh, you know uh, buyers uh, in the remote area can reach out to to those remote areas and in a fast way. And also the uh, recent policy support. Uh, last year, in China, there's, uh, there's about 30 over uh, so-called uh, free trade zones can allow the uh, goods made in China or made in overseas can, you know, doing the import and export. But this year, from this year, this, the, the number count has increased to 80, 80 over cities. Which means every province, there's 30 old province in China, and there's every province will have perhaps one. And even for, you know, perhaps Hainan, they have uh, uh, created uh, the entire province as a free trade zone. And this is building up right now. Uh, and I think the other element that we are talking about is a very stable and low cost domestic delivery network. Mm -hmm. That is important for the e-commerce because this, uh, you know, they need to fulfill all those orders. Yeah. Uh, and in China, there's, uh, uh, unlike to the other countries in China, you have easily select, you know, five to 10 domestic delivery vendors very easily. Yeah. Uh, and also for the uh, well developed, you know, the online payment, mobile payment method. You know, whether it's Alipay or WeChat Pay or the others, you know. Uh, and of course, you know, the event-driven uh, e-commerce market by those uh, platforms like uh, Alibaba, JD, mm -hmm. the recent uh, Pindodo, PDD, uh, you know, yeah. just uh, pop up very fast. Uh, they create the event, like shopping event, like, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the perhaps Double eleven is a is yes. A, We're yeah. going to talk about it later. So yes, and also it. correct. Then also the double twelve, yeah, mm -hmm. and also the six one eight created by yeah. JD. So all these you know combined together to you know to make this uh, you know the, this market is very very attractive and uh, you know for the for the, all the e-commerce operators to be okay. to be play you know in this uh, market, but. Uh, Competition is also very high. Mm, yes. So, you know, the new entries may be uh, felt, you know, a lot of challenge, you know, for the, all the new entries. Yeah, so that's yeah. that's this part. Yeah, for, hope yeah, to answer your questions. Yeah, you did. It was great. So what stands out about the Chinese market is that the most used services online are instant messaging and live stream videos. As Paul was mentioning before about payment methods, we see mm -hmm. that the most popular payment method is a line payment followed by credit card and debit card. More than 20% of shoppers shop directly from instant messaging feeds, such as WeChat, which has resulted in these services driving the development of mobile payment services. 
that work uh, directly from these messaging apps. This embrace of e-commerce and e-commerce is also set to drive China's growth. We see that the region with the highest complaint is Guangdong. I'm sorry for the pronunciation. I'm sure Paul will help us. And uh, the most common issue when shopping online is refund issues and delivery problems. So Paul, what do you think have been the main problems these shoppers encountered when shopping online? And why do you think Guangdong is the region with the highest number of complaints? Okay. Um... I think I've been in this logistics line for so many years. Uh, and for the e-commerce, I think this is one of the most important elements is uh, logistics, okay. the fulfillment part. Uh, in China, perhaps, you know, there's uh, uh, there's a few, uh, you know, the delivery networks. Right now, the if you're talking about this table that is about mm -hmm. nine 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 point five percent you know having the complaints for the for the e-shoppers uh it's the delivery issues uh we we take this uh, uh cross-border e-commerce as an mm -hmm. example right uh i think during this uh, special period of time last year and upcoming 2012 uh the line haul availability and cost is one of these uh, you know, two e essential factors for uh, to affect the uh, customer experience uh, because of this, uh, you know, the limited flights mm -hmm. and also the airline space issues will, will result in the uh, higher shipping costs and longer transit time. Mm -hmm. So, to to you know. Uh, this industry uh, to you know try to work around this you know for to improve and to ease this line haul you know the or you know the the, the, the cross border uh, uh, air or sea freight issues they actually uh, uh, chartered more flights you know, okay. during the last year and you know because for the uh, for the air transport you know the the also, or the express, in most cases, they, they go by air. But due to these limitations, I believe in last year, perhaps in uh, March or you know, April, there's uh, not much available passenger flights you know, flying across That's the true. continental. So uh, some of the, you know, the operators and uh, thinking about this uh, cross-region rails, you know, railway you know, mm -hmm. service, and even a sea and you know land service, road service, road free, free to service, to to resolve these uh, issues. Although the the transit time can be much longer than the than the air freight, but uh, you know during this special period of time, then it will you know serve uh, serve industry, make this industry going, right? Okay. And there's another major issue for the cross border. Uh, is a custom clearance and uh, separate check issues, right? Mm. Uh, some of the government, you know, may change the policy uh, given, you know, a period of time. Like, uh, for example, in Europe, there's, uh, you know, uh, ICS2 is coming for the security check. And uh, there's, uh, you know, the VAT uh, uh, issues in the Europe in the upcoming uh, July, right? And will also affect this uh, you know, cross-border. But for the uh, inbound to China, uh, perhaps, you know, the, the the sellers, you know, particular in Europe may, may, may not know that uh, if for the import in uh, into China market, the language issues is unique in China. I see. Because I see. for the majority of the European uh, e-sellers, the uh, main market perhaps is the USA, you know, within the Europe, or perhaps Australia, or the, the other part of Europe may, may not face this, uh, you know, language issues. But in China, for example, uh, the actually the address on the ship, shipping label, uh, and also the 
you know, the custom declaration data has to be in Chinese. Okay. I see. So that uh, creates, uh, you know, the challenge for the, for yeah, the, you know, it's the a big challenge. Market. Correct. And also the, uh, the custom in China may need, uh, you know, receiver ID with, uh, matching of the name in Chinese. Hmm. So, uh, for the, for the, for the clearance purpose. So most of the, you know, the logistic companies, uh, processing those shipments at origin in China, if they have, uh, you know, the human, uh, manpower, you know, relevant manpower to do that, or some of the companies also develop the, the KYC features, like uh, knowing your consignee that before the shipment, uh, after the shipment departing from the, you know, the origin, they push the message or emails to the receiver to let the receiver come back with a correct Chinese version of this uh, shipping details. Okay. So that's how the, yeah, that's how the, you know, to, uh, to improve this entire process in China. And right. yeah, come to your second question, why the, you know, Guangdong have a uh, uh. particular, okay, uh, because they're, they're buying more, <laughs> <laughs> they're buying more. And also it's uh, also, uh, it's one, of, because in China there's two uh, uh, regions is uh, having the most activities in the e-commerce. Uh -huh. uh, the eastern uh, part of China is, uh, you know, uh, is less. You know, the, the market size, you know, the, the value of the, perhaps is less than the uh, southern China, which is in Guangzhou. Okay. Correct. Okay. So these two parts will, you know, perhaps you know, make that comparable. Mm -hmm. I see. Okay, thanks. And mm -hmm. uh, in 2019, almost 40% of his shoppers between 25 and 35 years old shopped online during single stay. So were you mentioning already? It takes mm -hmm. place over the days around 11 November each year. And even though China's e-commerce market is expanding nationally, in 2020, Japan has been the country with the highest cross-border e-commerce share. What are, Paul, the main delivery methods in China? Because we see for payment methods, uh, there is a large use of WeChat, but what are the main common delivery methods? Okay, um, I think unlike uh, from the rest of the countries, you know, perhaps majority of the countries were using the post office, right? To run the last miles and uh, some of the express companies, like for example, UK have hands full, uh, you Dell, you know, uh, Hermes, DPD, you know, all this. But in China, a uh, majority of the e-commerce shipment is delivered by uh, the express company, Korea. Uh, post office, yes, they, they have certain uh, market shares, but uh, uh, it's not a major delivery force. And also for those, uh, you know, to door service, they also support it by the Pudo, uh, Pudo uh, uh, facilities like in Europe, you know, and also the store and shop, job off and collection points. So for this, uh, it's uh, very popular in, in China. Uh, and, uh, and also some of the uh, logistic companies in China uh, are also deploying the big data in the technology, the uh, the uh, in to e enable this uh, smart logistic process. So, which means take for example, if you are running the um, fulfillment as well, if you have a big data for the you know uh, uh, for the receivers or buyers, then you can pre-stock those uh, F FMCGs uh, near to their city where the warehouse located. So it's like uh, to shorten the, you know, the, the delivery time, lead time, not necessarily from, you know, the uh, Eastern part of China going to, uh, you know, perhaps Southern China. And also uh, our manned warehouse uh, trucks powered by AI and also deployed uh, some of the uh, pilot program in uh, most of the, you know, the top five degree companies in China. And you can search all this from uh, YouTube's, you know, there's a um, lot of fancy uh, 
shot videos to introduce this, uh, you know, the facilities. And also the DOM development uh, try for those remote areas, like our man, you know, the, the drone. They can, they uh -huh. start to, to use, deploy this uh, you know, as well. That's yeah. that's really technologically advanced. So really yeah, interesting. This, yeah, this started already, and uh, of course, some you know the regulations has to be mm. passed as well. You know. Okay. Yeah. And uh, we see that the main reason for Chinese to shop online is because uh, of product quality, followed by discounts and promotion. But Paul, what are the main trends or? threats you see among Chinese consumers. So how can a retailer gaining their um, importance among Chinese consumers? OK. Um, because Tough for question, this, uh, right? Yeah, the, the, the French marketing you mentioned about, or the, mm -hmm. OK. Because in uh, in China, uh, the most popular social media is WeChat. So in the, the on the WeChat, there's a feature it's called Moment Moment feature. So allow the individual to share the you know photos or short videos among the friend circles. So in China, they uh, they just love to you know share their lifestyles online, uh -huh. okay. and uh, uh, for this kind of uh, marketing. Uh, is uh, is limited to the small group of uh, you know close friend because for the WeChat you have to accept the friend request so you can join the circle. Then this is particularly uh, you know the influential for for for, for this uh, uh, small group of audience is less than five hundred to thousand. But but. Uh, if you leverage on this, perhaps the message or the you know the products or the you know the perhaps shopping website, right? And if you share by one, then going to be one to few, then to many, because this is a correct. This you know the the way that uh, you know the messaging are, are spread and uh, create a brand awareness and also the boost the revenue for these products as well. Uh, because of this kind of uh, uh, strategy, uh, they uh, they can build this trust very easy, you know, easier than the rest of the you know promoting message, you know, the message, and also uh, perhaps you know the uh, higher advertisement uh, ROIs. You know, you, you you may not need to invest a lot to to get these revenues convert to to the actual revenue online yeah. okay yeah we see in all the reports we write during the year that trust and personalization is always the key to uh, get in touch with consumers and to take care of them so it's, it's, it's interesting to see how also in China it works very well thank you for your insights and okay. then if we move uh, to the next slide we saw that during the pandemic the main factors driving consumers to shop online were to avoid crowds understandable the possibility to buy more items online and the importance to practice social distancing but after the lockdown convenience is the main factor still to continue shopping online followed by an overall positive experience paul but in your opinion do uh, Chinese consumers miss in-store shopping experience, or they just like shopping online. Um, I think for the for the Chinese consumers, uh, they are uh, they're changing their uh, shopping uh, preference. Mm. You know, uh, perhaps in the past, the shopping in the physical mall is uh, is like they really like to shopping, right? To. But now they perhaps it's a kind of lifestyle. They, they just need to walk around. But the majority of this, uh, you know, the FMCGs or even groceries during this pandemic, they they may turn on to the online uh, platforms. You know, so it's uh, it's a big change. You know, in the past, you know, you shop around. Uh, 
you, you really need to you go to shop you, you really want to buy something right but now you know uh, it's like a, a lifestyle you know the uh, you just get out from the uh, home if it's possible right to, to, to go to shopping malls uh, to walk around but it's not necessary to buy anything but if you really yeah correct that that's really interesting because if I think to other country report we did, people in the long run will tend to miss the in-store shopping experience. But at the same time, we saw that if online shopping gives the same experience of people having shopping online, in store, sorry, uh, they probably won't miss it so much. So I'm really thrilled to see how 2021 is going to look like and what we will expect in the future after this pandemic. Yeah, um, I think so it's, uh, yeah, if uh, people stay at it. home, yeah, stay at home too long, they prefer to go out. You know? yeah, yeah, that's true, that's true. So during the COVID-19 outbreak, the main change we see in consumer habits is the increase in live streaming shopping. Can you explain us what it means? Okay, uh, in this, you know, the live stream shopping is uh, is kind of uh, uh, so-called the media uh, to promote and selling goods through the influencer. Uh, oh, okay. And you no, know, the influencer may be uh, is a TV or you know the movie star or the normal comedian or even a normal person. You know who have experience and uh, you know to 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 show show the products right uh, on the social media channel, the own social media channel. And uh, personally, I think this is uh, this is nothing new. It's because you know in the in the eighties that's uh, you know the called TV shopping right mm -hmm. through the TV channels and uh, uh, the presenting on the TV then get the you know, to call in, right, to buy the certain promotional items, right? But for this live uh, streaming, uh, it's because the technology make it possible for each one of the individuals to open their own channels. And I think this is, a, you know, a tremendous achievement of this, you know, technology enhancement. True. So everyone, yeah, everyone will have a chance to to showcase, uh, you know, preferred or to do business online through this live stream. And in China, uh, there's uh, uh, a few, uh, like, uh, you know, uh, uh, Douyin is, uh, is a Chinese version of this TikTok. Oh, okay. And also, uh, you know, this competitor uh, recently been listed in Hong Kong Stock Exchange called Kuai Shou, you know, uh, and also, uh, this question is perhaps, you know, work with GD, GD.com. Uh, there's another one I perhaps need to mention, it's called uh, Billy Billy. Okay. Uh, it's so-called, it's like uh, a B-side. And actually this, uh, this brand is previously doing the uh, comic and cartoon for the young group of people. And now they are, they are uh, if, if the uh, brand owners or the e-commerce want to targeting the young group peoples, and this is, uh, you know, the, the live stream platform they need to engage in because 80% of the viewer and followers are the, from this age group. Mm -hmm. So they have different uh, tiers. And of course, you know, the Alibaba, they have top of life. You need to do the virtual shopping malls for for uh, for the uh, for the buyers, um, and uh, products featured uh, are mostly uh, cosmetics, beauty aids, and uh, fashion and food on these platforms, so they can show live. You know, and for this uh, live stream. Uh, It's also the, you know the way that you know can the brand can gain uh, awareness 
and also for the small and medium-sized companies who sell. Uh, even you know, right now in China, they have uh, farmers to sell the agricultural uh, products on these wow. platforms. You know, that is also the trend right uh, right now. Um, the reason why I'm seeing that you know this uh, live stream e-commerce e is uh, is growing rapidly is because the, the revenues of this uh, live stream through this live stream is about nearly 10% of the online online retail sale okay. and it's almost 100% increase against you know, uh, comparing you know, 2019 and 2020 increment so it's like you know this um, uh, Perhaps it's the next thing for the e-commerce, you know, uh, and I think this uh, what I'm you know seeing the Chinese e-commerce yeah. market, the, the trend, you know. Okay, and uh, we said that the main negative impact uh, COVID had on e-commerce shopping was uh, related to delivery issue. You already explained a lot about it and how cross-border and the delay in flights. Uh, mm -hmm. affected is but if you want maybe uh, we are almost at the end of our presentation and if you want to summarize three key points for people entering the e-commerce market in china what are your main suggestions for them okay i think it's uh, uh number one i think the, the the products has to be unique mm -hmm whether it's in design or quality or whatever. Uh, the chi China is a big market, but it's very competitive. There's so many brands want rushing and uh, your, your product has to be, is a key, you know, to enter this market. And the second thing is uh, you have to engage the, the correct market, market entry strategy and method. Uh, whether you are engaging with uh, a platform who is running this you know, to for for China market, or you are selling from overseas website, you know you have to engage with this proper uh, platforms to go in. And the last, I think, uh, it's come to the logistic. Uh, whether the platforms or you by yourself. You have to select a capable, uh, well-managed uh, logistic cross-border logistics to make your goods enter uh, to reach your to your uh, buyers on time uh, in a proper way. Okay. Uh, thank you so much, Paul, for your comments and thoughts. It was really, really interesting to listen to you. Uh, please, you can download the report via retailx.net. It is China-2020, free of charge to retailers and brands. We will be back with the report in 2021. Please let us know what you want to see covered. Do not miss coming reports investigating the U.S. 2020 reporting discussion and many more to come. So huge thanks to Paul Chu from Ascendia. Thank you so, so very much. Thank you. Thank you very much.